Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my video all about why the Night King has seven pointed star eyes. There was a preview right before they released the Game of Thrones season 8 trailer that showed us a really high resolution picture of his face. Everybody noticed this special detail and started freaking out so we'll break it down. So if you're new to my channel or you're just coming back after the long winter hiatus between seasons, I'll be doing Game of Thrones season 8 videos all season long and videos about the Game of Thrones prequel TV show that's airing next year. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. I also do book giveaways and merch giveaways on a weekly basis. Not only are the Night King's eyes seven pointed stars, but there's also flecks of black around his irises that make it look like he has many eyes within his two eyes, which is another Easter egg for a very specific book quote, tying him to a lot of other ideas within Game of Thrones. Quick reminder though that this version of the Night King on the TV show is not a book character because as of Book 5 Dance with Dragons right now, George R. R. Martin has made no mention of a current version of the Night King leading the White Walkers in present day. The only Night King that we know about is the mythical Night's King who was once a Stark of Winterfell and the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. But Martin claims that he died thousands of years ago killed by an alliance of the Wildlings at the time and the Stark King of the North at that time because it happened long, long time before the Andal invasion, long before Aegon's conquest. So Westeros was still divided up as seven different kingdoms with seven different petty kings. But the Night King on the TV show having seven pointed star eyes is such a specific detail I don't think that it's something that Dan and Dave and the show's producers came up with on their own. So if you guys don't remember way back after Game of Thrones season 3 in the Red Wedding the TV show's producers and writers met with George R. R. Martin in what is now known as the famous Santa Fe meeting where he revealed the future of A Song of Ice and Fire story to them because this was a couple years ago he had even less of Winds of Winter completed and they were getting ready to start writing season Season 4 of the TV show so they needed to start focusing on how they would eventually end the show and even though George R. R. Martin had an ending in mind his method for writing is more like gardening a story which means that he comes up with lots of new ideas as he goes along for characters and storylines. It's one of the reasons why the books have been so amazing and why the story becomes so sprawling it's also become one of the biggest reasons why it's harder for him to end the story and finish the books at this point. Despite that problem, even as far back as a couple years ago, he still had a very broad idea of how he would end the story. So that's what the TV show's producers got. So even though there's going to be a lot of details that will be very different in the ending of the books, the TV show's ending and all this mythology that they're trying to tie together before the end of the story will still bear a lot of similarities to the books. But that's the thing. The TV show does not make up a lot of the mythology as they go along. It's all based on what they learned from George R. R. Martin during that special meeting. After that big meeting they went on to write season 4. What happened that was really special during season 4? We saw the Night King in the lands of always winter for the first time. We learned how he created new white walkers using Craster's sons or potentially other sons of northerners that sacrificed them to him. There was a lot of other things that George R. R. Martin revealed to them at that meeting. He told them the truth about the origin of Hodor's name so that they could do that season 6 episode 5 moment hold the door. There's a lot of big mythology in play during season 8. That's also based on some of the stuff that he told them way back then. This behind the scenes of the Night King in his face and his eyes is during season 5 Hard Home episode. The behind the scenes from that video is actually really good. I'll play a clip from it in a second because there's a very specific quote about the Night King and Jon Snow's moment that I think that they'll be paying off during season 8. Night King sees this and he sees Jon kill one of his lieutenants and it's kind of a... Well, this, this kid's interesting. This kid's actually like possibly a threat for me. So he's very much looking at John then when he does what he does at the end of the episode. I think the script was very explicit about it. It says that the Night King and John share an unpleasant exchange that is not comfortable for John. And, uh, and uh, we called it for ages, you know, an, it's a non verbal fuck you. I think it's a terror John has never known before. I mean, they're seeing the White Walkers, and then they're seeing the White Walker King with an army of 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 undead. The final image of the Night King, the Night King raising his hands, was all David and Dan. They said they wanted it to be like an orchestra. Look at the Night King's eyes here. You can actually see the same star eyes that you see in this season 8 preview image. And even though they recast the actor who plays the Night King, it's obviously the same basic idea. They're not going to completely change his face. It's just the structure of his face looks a little bit different because the actor who's playing him looks a little bit different. 
The sheer amount of mythology that they tie together by making his eyes seven pointed stars is such a specific thing that I think it's all based on stuff that George R. Martin told them during that meeting. It ties together Easter eggs about the three eyed raven, the children of the forest, the old gods, the faces on all the weirwoods, and all the religions that we know about within the world of Game of Thrones, including the big MacUmber Easter egg. If you're not familiar with Mac Umber, it's actually one of Old Nan's tales, and it's a story that Rob Stark is telling to Bran Stark. He says, One time she told me that the sky is blue because we live inside the eye of a blue-eyed giant named Mac Umber. And then Bran Stark says, Maybe we do. So it's just a folk tale within Westeros that the world that they live in, Planetos, is the eye of a blue-eyed giant. The iris of that blue-eyed giant is the Isle of Faces, which we know is a very elementally powerful place for the children of the forest. This is where they use the hammer of the waters to smash the arm of Dorne. So McGumber is a folk tale that's evolved from real-life events in history. There's a very special scene during season five when Arya first enters the house of black and white and Jack and Hagar is giving her the grand introduction to their ways. She looks up at all the idols representing the many different religions of the world and starts to learn about the many face god. In the context of the faceless men's order, the many face god represents death. The girl must become no one. Which one's the many face god? I see the stranger. I see the drowned god. I see the wayward face. There is only one god. Ego knows his name, and all men know his gift. But even as far back as when the first book came out in the 90s, readers started to theorize that when people talked about the faith of the seven, different religion of the Andals, the seven were just many different aspects of the same god. The different aspects of the faith are the father, the mother, the maiden, the crone, the warrior, the smith, and the stranger. The stranger represents death and the unknown, just like the many-faced god represents death. So already on that smaller level, book readers are thinking, wait a minute, it sounds like they're worshipping the same idea and just calling it different names. Think about the timeline this way though, the Night King was created during the children's war with the first men, thousands of years before the Andals invaded. The Andals are the ones that created the Faith of the Seven. They brought that religion to Westeros when they invaded, they themselves fleeing the East to escape the expansion of the Valyrian Freehold. So the Night King predates the religion of the Faith of the Seven. He also predates the concept of the Many-Faced God. The idea of the Many-Faced God came about when slaves working in the Valyrians' minds, who all came from disparate cultures in the East that the Valyrians had conquered, slowly started collectively worshipping the same idea. One of the cornerstones of their order is that they all work as assassins when someone names a name. is part of the idea that the slaves working in the Valyrian mines wanted to get revenge for their subjugation. So even though there are a lot of geological reasons for the doom of Valyria and the 14 flames all erupting at the same time, all those different volcanoes, there's a lot of people that think that it's a very similar situation to when the children of the forest used the hammer of waters to smash the arm of Dorne. They called upon this elemental magic of the planet and the old gods to help them out. So it's possible that the Valyrian slaves worshipping the many-faced god were also really worshipping the same elemental force of the planet and remembering that the Night King's creation predates all of these things happening, it makes sense that he and the White Walkers inspired a lot of religions and ideas and customs that came later. So if the children of the forest are calling upon this same elemental magic to create the Night King, it would make sense that he bears the mark of that elemental force. That all these people are worshipping and just using different names to call different aspects of the Seven the Many-Faced God, the faces on the Weirwoods representing the Old Gods, the Night King, Bran Stark, the Three-Eyed Raven, the children of the forest, all drawing their power, including Melisandre, from the same place, the same elemental force. Thinking about the myth of McGumber as a representation of that elemental force, the Night King is also a visual easter egg for that too, the blue-eyed giant. He's just the terrible side of that elemental force. There's this long-standing theory about him needing to destroy the Isle of Faces in order to bring about a permanent long night. That might be a detail that the TV show does not include. We don't really know about that yet. The books go a lot deeper on these theories and legends. But that would tie together the McGumber theory if the Isle of Faces is the iris in the eye of McGumber. The other really cool easter egg for the Three-Eyed Raven is for the song A Thousand Eyes and One, which is actually a song about Brynden Rivers before he became the Three-Eyed Raven when he was known as the Blood Raven. And the song goes, how many eyes does Lord Blood Raven have a thousand eyes in one? 
So it's a metaphor for Mac Umber, but you also look at the Night King's eyes and all those little flecks of black in them that make it look like he has many eyes in his two eyes. The Thousand Eyes Easter Egg was mentioned during Storm of Swords, so it's just another way early in the story of A Song of Ice and Fire for George R. Martin to seed Easter eggs and clues about the White Walkers before you learn a lot about them. To say that all these things, the Blood Raven, the Three-Eyed Raven, the White Walkers, the religions of Game of Thrones are all things that are part of the same idea. Everything is connected. Post all your Night King theories in the comments below and there'll be more Game of Thrones happening this week, no worries. But congratulations to the winner from my last big video, Rob Flower. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here to rewatch the Game of Thrones season eight trailer a billion more times in all my Easter eggs and click here for my breakdown of that new Night King and White Walkers preview. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.